Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, first of all, a bit of a tribute to Stan Lee. I mean, without him, we'd have no chance on reviewing such cool toys and characters. So rest in peace, Stan Lee. You did the whole earth a big favor with the work that you created. So um, yeah, I think it's it's peaceful in the end how he passed away. But of course, all the Marvel fans out there are definitely sad. All right, so today I've got you the Iron Spider on the review table, as you can see. The Iron Spider itself is definitely not a creation by Stan Lee, but of course the base character. But for me as an Iron Man collector, this is definitely a must-have. I mean, you have here the best of both worlds, Spidey and Iron Man in one character. So that's just the main reason for me to actually get this figure, because other than um, the black Spider-Man don't own that many Spider-Man characters, so that's actually my second Spider-Man figure. So I can't deliver you any good comparisons um, with latest Homecoming um, figures or something like that. But um, I try my best to get you at least a decent video review on the Iron Spider figure. So let's get this started. So for the box, this is no big surprise, we have the MS482 and overall it goes in the line of the Infinity War figures. But I definitely dig the image that they use of Iron Spider on the front, looks really dynamic, I love the colors that they applied. And here on the right side you have a bit of this mechanical arm or leg. Alright, let's continue directly to the figure. So and here we go, Iron Spidey out of the box and guys, you will be definitely impressed when you take this out of the packaging. The suit and material that they used, it's crazy awesomeness. I have no clue what it is in terms of the material, but you will see it in detail afterwards. So let's go first for the accessories. So let's zoom down to the accessories and I would say let's start first with the mechanical arms because they're the major thing here in the box and they use quite a lot of space in the box actually. Uh, yeah, as you can hear it's a uh, ratchet joint, definitely sturdy, nicely painted, all plastic, quite a sharp blade here. Uh, you have two different variants in terms how um, they look at the connecting piece to the body. Um, the one here on the right side goes on to the bottom and the one on the left goes to the top. And then it's basically the same on the left side and uh, like on the right side. Then you have a secondary mask and this mask is actually has a light up feature. So let's see. Here we go. Look at these nice shiny eyes. And the cool thing is it has like a reflective layer in it. Not sure how it pops on the camera, but you will see this sometimes a bit reflecting. It's quite a nice uh, material underneath like a translucent layer. You have like a, a white reflective layer. Um, definitely take your time with the battery compartment. I never had such a tedious task to do on a Hot Toys figure. It's so tiny you have to fit in these three little um, batteries and I would definitely use uh, some special tweezers and not the ones that Hot Toys gave you in the box. Then next up is um, the unmasked portrait of Spidey. This is Tom Holland. It's my first Tom Holland head sculpt. I think it's a reuse from the Homecoming figure from what I read. I'm okay with it, probably won't use it because um, it's definitely giraffe neck. When you put it on the, on the body, you will see this afterwards. So I'm not totally convinced. Also the head sculpt itself, I mean the portrait is really I would say a bit boring, so there's absolutely no emotion on it. Not sure how I like it. But I mean, of course you can, it definitely resembles Tom Holland, so you you know um, quite instantly that this is the actor who played Spidey in the latest Avengers movies. So then here on the bottom left you have different eye pieces that you actually can use to put into the main helmet without the LEDs in it. Um, I can try to show this to you. It's a bit uh, tedious work to get these eyes out of the helmet and you definitely have to be a bit careful. Not sure how this works the best way. So basically pull it down with the fingernail somehow. And let's use this one 
just put it into the socket and that's it so it definitely goes into the line of like the Deadpool uh, figure we used to to remove and replace the eye sockets there and last but not least you have different web or net elements that you can attach to the hands so it's for, for doing some cool action poses but I'm not sure if I will ever use them I had them on my black Spidey from my um, Spider-Man 3 but never used them really and here yeah. down on the right side we have the socket pins to actually cover up the holes on his backside where the mechanical arms would go so you will see this also later on and then of course you have an Avengers Infinity War base with like a flight stand on the backside. So I would say we go for the head sculpt first and I will do some of the replacement parts and show how this interacts with the body and the neck plug. So let's do first a close up on the standard head sculpt, the masked one. And I would say the sculpting um, solution is pretty sweet. I mean. From distance it's definitely hard to tell it's a plastic um, helmet. It could be uh, the same material that they used on the suit from a distance. But here we have now one of the first negatives I think. This giraffe neck is also visible on the masked um, pose I would say. You definitely have a bit of freedom to make it look better but overall it's definitely a long long neck so this is done via a magnetic neck adapter so this is a magnetic plate and in here is also a magnetic plate and you basically just put it on it doesn't hold too tight or too well so it's an, uh, quite a loose fit but I think it will be alright so first pose the figure and then attach the head sculpt otherwise it, you will risk that it will fly away then let's switch it out with the LED helmet it's basically the same way personally I think this fits a bit better also still a giraffe neck but overall it has a better hold to the to the neck plug and now let's see let's switch on the LEDs so here we go definitely cool and you might can see now this reflective layer inside the eye sockets it's a nice nice effect so let's dim down the lights a bit in total dark it looks like this it's not like a major bright light but it will do the job but unfortunately it has like a dim down fade away um, problem or issue like uh, with most of the Iron Man figures after some seconds the whole light power will decrease and that's a bit unfortunate because overall I definitely like this solution how they put it all into this uh, plastic helmet here so let's see how this performs with the Tom Holland head sculpt alright so <laughs> Looking from straight or a bit above it's okay, but as soon as you have him look like this, it looks totally unnatural and the giraffe neck is even more prominent than on the on the helmet version because or masked version because you have this harsh contrast between red suit and human skin. And I don't understand why Hotos did not invest a bit more time to get this fully done on the production line because I see you see at least you could drill down even more in the head sculpt here that it's basically a bit more connected to the chest area but this way it's just too far away and looks not natural enough so that's definitely an issue on this figure and I'm sure there will be models who will find a, an easy and proper way to get the, um, the head scalp a bit more into the chest area. I think aside from this issue it looks quite good. So if there is a solution for this, I mean it would be like a nice display variant with the Tom Holland head sculpt on it. 
But right now I'm definitely going for the masked um, pose. So next up is the overall tailoring. And I would say let's start again with the head sculpt and pan down a bit because here are all the positives in this rear view. I'm so amazed with this suit. I cannot tell you if there's been already something like this from Hot Toys, but I, I was totally overwhelmed when I get it figure. It's, it's basically some kind of a latex material, really bendy, but at the same time it has this metallic shine over, over it. I mean, look at this area here, it looks so super sweet. And then you have all these details in the red parts. I hope the camera can catch this. You have all these little web netting details all over. Also here on the shoulder area. This is so well done. As a big props to Hot Toys. When I was checking out the Hong Kong Comic Con pictures, I was not totally um, convinced that this will work. But now having this figure in the hand, it's it's a total blow away thing for me. Have such a suit and material, we want to talk about the creasing and wrinkling and the danger how to damage the suit. Of course, I cannot tell you about the long term effects, but um, I can tell you definitely a bit on the short term base. So before this video review, I had uh, some Instagram photos loaded up uh, with some action poses, and basically I lifted up the file like this and then you see there's some huge wrinkling going on and this definitely will have an effect on the suit but I think the material is quite forgiving so when you move it back you will see of course there is some temporary wrinkling going on but I can tell you after 10 or 30 minutes it will be almost gone so it's a nice material that they're using here and I think if you are not afraid to have a bit of wrinkling going on, this is a might might be a good suit for you to do some real action poses. But I cannot tell you about the long term situation, so it will be interesting to see how this goes on. Overall, I'm definitely impressed with the suit and also the articulation. So, for example, here also on the arms, there's no blocking. You have a bit of, of blocking here on the sides, so you kind of put it flat to the body. But overall I'm pretty, pretty happy how this turned out. The legs have some ratchets in it. So overall I'm definitely impressed with the articulation, look at this. So there's absolutely great articulation on the legs and Pretty cool is the tip articulation on the feet. Never saw that before. Not sure if it was already on the homecoming, homecoming figure. But then again, you can do some cool crawling poses. And I'll try this out with the mechanical arms attached later on. And look at this pose here. Of course, it's not free floating right now, but I'm sure there will be somebody out there who can pose it like this with a bit more patience and passion in posing. Let's see for example the night. I mean I already saw your promo shots Dean. I'm, I'm sure you will post the hell out of this character. And let's see. So on the elbow articulation this is also great. But here of course you have the creasing danger as well. And it's also stated in the manual that you should not over pose something in the, in the long term because of uh, possible long term uh, damages to the suit. Here on the back side, let's continue with the mechanical arms or basically these sockets that I told you about. So it's quite a good solution. You just pull off these plugs here. These are by basically the sockets for the mechanical arms. So before I continue with the mechanical arms here, I've put them back into the upright position and you can see here now the creasing going on from the action pose. So let's see how this develops in the further progress of the video review. I would assume that it goes back into an almost um, normal situation again. So for the mechanical legs, here we have the ones on the bottom. They're indicated also here in the inner side, it's called DR something. And I know just from some of the pictures that these have to go onto the bottom side because it has the same sharp edge like on the socket pieces. So here's the other one. 
it's a nice tight fit and as you can see you have this ratchet joints going on it has a good good noise to it and here are the ones from the top side so it's like this tight fit and of course you have all the articulation so you can rotate these fully you can extend these put them back so and here we go from the front view with the full spread of the legs and it's quite amazing it's really cool cool concept and how they realized it in the movie and now you have the total freedom so you can bend these into the front and because of these cool ratchet joints they stay in place perfectly and from what I understood so from what I read from the Marvel wiki it's rather a traversing equipment or a crawling help or an escaping help than a fighting or weapon equipment so it's I think also in the movie he did not really use it to fight maybe more to grab somebody or rescue something or rescue him himself basically from some dangerous situations but overall the realization of hot toys and how they recreated the whole thing in, in a physical form is really top notch so let's zoom down a bit on the thighs so that i can give you an update on how the creasing looks after about 10 to 15 minutes all right so it's still visible but um, I'm okay with that I mean it's not like it won't be perfect anymore that's for sure that's that's certain and if you have a problem with having something in pristine condition it's probably better to have a secondary figure use one for museum poses and perfect condition and the other one for action posing so how does this manage to pose with their articulated legs and having spidey on the floor it's the first time that i actually can pose a spidey figure like this not sure about the homecoming figure if if you can do that but so that's pretty amazing really you see how these legs have the bend at the, the tip this works perfect and then of course you have the total freedom with the magnetic mask here to put it into a better pose so if you have him posed like this on a like a higher shelf it look it will look awesome then of course the mechanical legs are perfect to support certain poses so the like sitting pose that I couldn't manage to do on its own is now easily achievable with the mechanical legs on the back side just putting down onto the review table so I'm really a fan of how they realized the concept so then I put on the Tom Holland head sculpt again and as you can see it looks nice from a top down perspective but as soon as you get a bit more on the side or from the bottom up you have this uh, giraffe neck situation which is definitely not cool so but overall it also works with the Tom Holland head sculpt uh, if you want to go for that option all right guys last pose in this video review and then we do the conclusion so what we have here is an upright position with the mechanical legs already and pushing forward into the action and battle and guys i have to tell you the balance and stabilization on the posing is so well thought through and i totally dig the feet toe tip articulation because it gives you a lot of um, secure posing so my conclusion for me that's a must-have definitely a must-have there's no real deal breaker if you can live with the creasing if you can live with the giraffe neck on the Tom Holland head sculpt you will be totally fine the suit is amazing the articulation is there the mechanical legs this is all nice well and thought through and for me as, as Iron Man fan this is the perfect amalgamation of Spider-Man and Iron Man I would say a no-brainer so get it and I hope you enjoyed this video review see you next time enjoy your weekend and bye bye